In today's video segment, we're going to discuss the role of magnesium in the treatment of atrial fibrillation. I'll discuss the data behind using it for AFib management and when it may be helpful. If you find this information is useful, or you know someone else who can learn from this information, please place a like, a comment, or a share of this video, because that is how more people are going to be able to see this video. So, what is the role of magnesium in managing a patient's atrial fibrillation? When a patient goes online and searches about magnesium and AFib, they'll find a lot of information out, out there about its use. There are several web pages promoting magnesium use as a natural treatment for atrial fibrillation and promoting several different types of over-the-counter supplements for magnesium. But what does the data show? Is there any medical literature out there that says magnesium is beneficial for atrial fibrillation? Magnesium deficiency is common, as most people in the United States do not eat enough magnesium in their daily diet. Magnesium is a very important mineral that's involved in the coordination of a natural heartbeat and it is a key component of the energy molecules needed to help keep your heart beating strong. About 99% of total body magnesium is located in the bone, muscles, and soft muscular uh, non-muscular soft tissue, whereas only a small percentage of about 1% is located in the bloodstream at any time. However, when being tested for magnesium deficiency, it is that blood concentration that is normally uh, tested in a blood test. There are a few studies out there testing out whether magnesium deficiency actually affects AFib. For example, in the 2013 study as part of the Framingham Heart Study, over 3,500 patients were studied over 20 years. In this study, individuals in the lowest quartile of serum magnesium were 50% more likely to develop AFib compared to those in the upper quartiles of, of magnesium concentrations. In another study from 2016, an HMO database showed that an increased AFib risk was associated with mild and moderately decreased serum magnesium levels. So there's certainly data showing a link between low magnesium levels and the risk of AFib. But is there actually data showing that supplementing magnesium will decrease, improve, or even reverse a patient's atrial fibrillation? At this point, there has been no long-term clinical trials to date that demonstrate replacing magnesium either reduces or reverses atrial fibrillation, meaning that there are no clinical studies at this time that have shown for people who take magnesium supplements uh, for years have a decrease in their AFib or reversal in their AFib. To date, the research to date has been shown associated mostly in the short-term management of AFib usually in the setting of a hospital or, an emer or emergency room or in the setting of someone having heart surgery. Actually, the majority of studies involving magnesium and atrial fibrillation are in the situation of patients who are undergoing heart surgery. Episodes of atrial fibrillation are a significant concern for patients who are undergo open heart surgery, such as a bypass surgery, because they can significantly prolong a patient's hospitalization and recovery after surgery. There have been over 10 studies published over the years about giving magnesium supplementation prior to heart surgery. And there's still no clear consensus. Some studies say it helps, others say it does not help. In addition, there are several studies that have looked at into the use of magnesium infusion in the setting of the emergency room or in the hospital. And it has been found that intravenous magnesium can slow the heart rate down when it's going too fast during an AFib episode. Also, giving magnesium uh, can also help with the conversion of AFib back to normal rhythm, and it can also improve the success rate of a cardioversion, especially when given in combination with antiarrhythmic type heart medications. As I recently mentioned, the majority of a person's magnesium is in the inside of your cells, with only a very small amount uh, is found inside in your bloodstream, whereas most typical blood tests only test for magnesium levels inside the serum, which only comes from a very small percentage of the total body magnesium. There are several tests available that can test for deficiency in total body magnesium, which in theory would be a more accurate way to test for magnesium deficiency. However, these types of tests are not typically covered by insurance, and which may end up costing a patient several hundreds of dollars out of pocket. In addition, there's no clear clinical trial data that says that looked at these more expensive tests to determine if testing for magnesium deficiency in a 
more total body deficiency versus just a simple uh, blood test has any benefit to the patient. For those who are found to be magnesium deficient, how do you supplement magnesium? There have been over 10 types of magnesium supplements available and many are advertised directly to heart patients to help them manage their AFib and other heart arrhythmias. There does appear to be a lot of variability between the different types of supplements and how much of the magnesium is actually absorbed. But do they actually help with a patient's atrial fibrillation? Like any over-the-counter supplement, they are not as strictly monitored by the FDA and there's no clear clinical trial data that shows that any particular supplement or brand or particular supplement reduces the amount of AFib a patient has. So what do I typically recommend to my patients? First, for any patient with atrial fibrillation, it's important to routinely check a patient's magnesium level. I routinely check a serum blood test uh, for the magnesium level because it's readily available and covered by most insurances. In addition, the clinical studies that have been looked at magnesium deficiency in atrial fibrillation have looked at your typical serum blood test magnesium. Despite theoretical advantages, I don't routinely test for those intracellular magnesium due to higher out-of-pocket costs to patients. And the fact that there has been no clear clinical trial data looking at intracellular magnesium and the risk of atrial fibrillation. If you're found to be deficient, consider supplementing with foods that are high in magnesium, such as dark green vegetables, avocados, bananas, legumes, nuts, or fatty fish, just to name a few. Another option is to increase your magnesium level is with over-the-counter supplements. I typically start with magnesium oxide due to the fact that it's widely available in most drug stores and is typically well tolerated. However, there is a wide range of supplements available and I've seen several patients benefit from other types of supplements such as magnesium glycinate and magnesium tarate. But please, let's always discuss with your doctor which supplement may be right for you and always routinely check your magnesium level if you have atrial fibrillation to see if you have deficiency.